Is this finally the year of the Linux desktop? I'm not sure. But when I saw the DHH released Amarchi, I had to give it a go. The TLDR is Amarchi is the easiest way to get a working, developer-ready Arch Linux and Hyperland setup. It is literally a single script. If you ever tried Arch on Hyperland before, you know that is not an easy feat. For me, I used it to give this old laptop a new lease of life as a powerful dev machine. The only issue I found was that this laptop was bricked, but luckily I found out that removing the battery and leaving the laptop powered by a cable does the trick to fix it. So now that I do have a functioning laptop, let me show you my five favorite features of Amarchi. And as a spoiler, the fifth one is how easy it is to set up. That way I can show you why you want to use it first and then how to. My first favorite feature is a pretty important one, navigation. How do we actually use Amarchi? Obviously, we can move around with our mouse here. No, 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 no. Do not do that. With a Marchi, it is a sin to use your mouse. We are going keyboard only. Take your mouse and throw it away. My mouse didn't hit the pillow. With a Marchi, your new best friend is going to be the super key. This is your gateway to everything. Super in Space opens up the Wi-Fi app launcher where we can see all of our installed apps, but a quicker way to get to some of them is to use the keyboard. We can do Super B to open up the browser, Super Enter to open up the terminal, Super J if we want to change the layout of that, and then Super J to change it back. You can do Super F to open up the file manager, Super T to open up the activity monitor. And as you can see, I need to stop because there is just so many that I could do. Super N opens up NeoVim. Sorry, it turns out I had one more in me. If you want to see a list of everything that you can do with the keyboard, check out the docs. My favorite feature in there is that if you do caps lock space N or E, it will actually enter the name or email that we configured at the start. It's just a super cool, nice to have. Now that you are a keyboard warrior though, what apps can we actually use? What does Amarchi come installed with? Obviously you saw a spoiler of a few of them there when I was opening them up, but let's split this into two categories. Feature number three is going to be for the terminal tools and apps, and then feature four for the GUIs and commercial apps. For the terminal then, which is Alacriti by the way, Amarchi actually comes with all of the quality of life pieces of software that I absolutely love. The big one, of course, is NeoVim. Actually comes pre-configured with LazyVim, which is super awesome to see. And you can open that up with Super N as we saw earlier, or as you just saw there in the project you want to open, just do N and then dot, and boom, we're ready to jump right in with development. Other great terminal tools includes our LazyGit and LazyDocker. We actually have separate videos on these if you want to learn more, but the TLDR is they're just awesome terminal UIs for their respective tools. We also saw earlier when I opened up the activity monitor, this is actually just BTOP that's being used. And then we also have the Amarchi about page, which is actually just running fast fetch under the hood. Finally, there's Mies, which lets you run multiple versions of programming languages on the same machine, whether that's going to be Ruby on Rails, Node, Go, Python, or Elixir. You can see here, I just used it to install the latest version of Node. So those are my favorite terminal apps that Amarchi comes with, but obviously there is loads, loads more. You can check out the documentation to see all of them. There's even shell tools in there that I use daily, like Zoxide and Fuzzy Finder. Not everything lives in the terminal though, sometimes we do need a GUI. For that, my favorite apps that Amarchi comes installed with are Obsidian for note-taking, MPV for playing your videos, we've got LibreOffice for your open source Word, PowerPoint, and so on, and we even have OBS for exactly what I'm using it for right now. There's actually a distinction in the documentation between GUIs and commercial GUIs, as Amarchi's goal is to be open source and free where possible, but sometimes you can't escape Big Corp, and that's why it includes apps as well, like Spotify and 1Password. The final thing that's really cool about apps as well is there's actually shortcuts for web apps in here like ChatGPT and YouTube. If I do Super and A and then Super and Y, you can see that's going to open up ChatGPT and YouTube. And these are actually just the websites themselves, but they've been installed like applications. And that means they also show up on Wi-Fi here with a nice little icon and their name as well. So we can do the same here for ChatGPT. It's just a super cool way you can do this and you can actually add your own as well with a really simple command that you can find in the documentation. Now, if you've made it this far, you obviously like what you see from Amarchi, so let's take a look at how quickly you could get this set up on your machine, and also how easy it is to customize. The first step is going to be installing Arch Linux. Now, I won't go into too much detail here, because there's already tons of detailed guides out there, but for Amarchi specifically, you do want to make sure you have disk encryption turned on, and also that wget is going to be installed. You can see all of the setup expectations on the Amarchi documentation. Once Arch has been installed though, installing a Marchi to take it from what we have here to what we've just seen is as simple as a wget command. All we need to do is wget amarchi.org slash install and then pipe that into bash. During this process, it will ask you for your sudo password a few times and then also your git details so it can pre-configure that. And it does mention that it takes between 5 and 30 minutes depending on your setup. So grab a cup of tea and wait for your new Linux experience to begin. 
Once it is ready, all you need to do is reboot and you're ready to go. If you are someone who likes to tinker with dot files though, these are also really easily customizable without worrying that you're going to be overwriting Amarchi's defaults. These are actually stored somewhere else. You can find the dot files that you can configure in your dot config folder at your home. In here, you can configure anything to suit your needs, like your monitors, your Hyperland setup, your workspaces. You can even add new themes and backgrounds to Amarchi itself. Talking of themes, it actually comes pre-installed with a few that you can choose from. All you need to do is super control shift and space, and that will actually open up the theme picker. Then in here, we can choose the theme like Capuchin, Matt Dark, and so on. It changes everything universally too, which is really nice. So the terminal, the menu bar, and everything is following the new theme. There we go, those are my five favorite features of Amarchi, but as I've been saying throughout, do go ahead and check out the documentation. There's loads more in there, like fingerprint authentication and how updates are handled. Amarchi really did take the empty box that is Arch and it just shoved everything into it that a developer would need. So let me know in the comments what you think of this down below. And if you run Linux, let me know what distro is your favorite. While you're down there, like and subscribe, and as always, see you in the next one.